Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome all of our friends from all over the United States and Canada. We've got uh, some folks joining us from Boston today and Ottawa and Seattle. We've got L.A. and Houston and even Honolulu on here uh, from all over North America. So thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us for another Flycast Partners presentation. My name is Rich Longo, and I'll be your host. Today's webinar is What is BMC Discovery? And uh, who better to explain that than Flycast Partners, a resident expert on the matter, Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton is a software engineer for Flycast Partners with well over 25 years in the IT service management space. His career started as a network engineer for Perot Systems and was quickly hired by Network Associates as a professional services consultant where he delivered ITSM solutions around the world for thousands of customers. Kyle's primary focus is on ITIL processes and architecture. He has an extensive knowledge of CMDB and asset management projects and also deals with automation and management solutions such as BMC Client Manager and BMC Discovery. Kyle has been a certified consultant for Front Range, Paragrind Software, BMC Remedy Force, Service Desk Express, BMC Discovery, and BMC Client Manager, as well as uh, more recently learning all about Avante, uh, as well as being an IT ITIL certified and Microsoft MCSE, as well as many, many other certifications. Before we get started, Kyle, let me introduce our organization. Flycast Partners is here to deliver a seriously amazing IT experience founded and staffed by personnel that have many years of experience in the IT space, we took the best ideas from these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading value-added reseller in the North American IT market. We offer best-in-class implementation services and training in ITSM, ITAM, workload autom automation, capacity optimization, enterprise service management, all using ITIL best practice. Our professional services can easily scale up or down in order to meet the IT needs of any organization, regardless of size, complexity, or budgetary restrictions. We offer implementation services both on-site as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing remote administration and support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on your day-to-day -day operations, saving you both precious time and money. I encourage you to visit our website at www.flycastpartners.com and check on any one of these tabs for topics that may interest you, whether it be training, upcoming events, or some of our resources, which do include uh, white papers and data sheets for various products and various uh, uh, ideas, even in ITIL best practice processes. I also encourage you to take a look at our webinars page and sign up for some upcoming webinars that may interest you. Uh, share them with your coworkers or friends, and uh, we encourage you to join us in some of our upcoming live events. Uh, we are also having an event uh, come up here coming up here shortly on the 21st in. Um, in Orlando, I'd like to invite any of you that are in Florida, our Florida friends, to join us in Orlando as we're going to do a private screening of uh, Transformers the last night. Uh, so by all means, if you're interested, go ahead and sign up today. Uh, we'd love to see you there. We're going to have a great time with it. And uh, with that being said, I think it's time to turn this over to our resident expert, uh, Kyle Hamilton. Kyle, we appreciate you joining us today. I know that uh, you had a, quite the busy day uh, planned out for you. And and uh, actually, uh, uh, we're double booked even for this. So I want to thank you for taking time out to join us. Happy to do so. Very, very welcome. Let me uh, welcome everybody to the call uh, and to today's demonstration, um, as well as share my screen out so we can take a look at BMC Discovery in a little more depth and hopefully provide some context as to how you could employ BMC Discovery with your environment um, on a multitude um, of different uh, business uh, priorities that you might have, whether it be disaster recovery planning, um, data center moves, um, asset management and inventory objectives. Um, you'll find that BMC Discovery provides a host of information that's critical to 
uh, almost all, uh, let's say all organizations in terms of managing their IT infrastructure, but is quite often um, a black hole or an area that has the least understanding in terms of asset uh, information um, and, and detailed discovery details. So hopefully this will help illuminate how BMC Discovery can maybe shine some light on some of those dark corners of your network in the same way. So first, as you get started, uh, as you get started, Kyle, I do want to remind everyone: if you do have questions, please, by all means, uh, type them in the Q and A section of this WebEx, and Kyle will answer your questions as many as he can get to today. So take some time out as we go along, and you have questions, type them in that Q and A section. We'll be happy to get to them as we can. Thanks, Rich. So before we dive into the interface and start looking at some of the data and the information that BMC Discovery is able to, to provide. Um, let me take a couple of steps back and talk just briefly about some of the advantages of this, this discovery tool um, in, your, in your environment and in the marketplace in general. Number one, one of the great things about BMC Discovery is it's delivered as a virtual appliance, number one, and it's all based on agentless discovery. So you're talking about your, uh, you know, in terms of a customer or a user, you know, deploying this solution, it's a ready to run appliance. There's no installation of the product. Um, deployment takes place in minutes. Um, there's no external database, no operating system that's required to be installed or configured. Um, you can get operational with the product very, very quickly. And because there's an agentless approach to the discovery, there's no software to roll out to servers or infrastructure devices or anything to push out in terms of anything beyond the BMC Discovery Virtual Appliance. So what you find is this, this tool provides a great balance when you look at the market in terms of what you're able to, dis discovery depth, the, the detail of the discovery you're able to capture agentlessly um, the impact of the infrastructure, and then of course all the administrative overhead and everything that's that's saved through this approach, um, to be able to to see how um, you could get something up and running very very quickly that can provide a lot of valuable information and detail um, in, in a quick manner on your data center, on your infrastructure, key infrastructure assets, um, mapping all of those. Um, those inventory items, those configuration items, um, and building those relationships and mapping all of those applications to the IT infrastructure, that's what BMC Discovery can provide in addition to things like uh, BMC Client Management or Microsoft SCCM or Landesk where you're managing point devices um, where you have agents that are typically deploying that are allowing you to manage those devices. Um, quite frequently, you know, uh, data center administrators, server admins, network admins, they're loath to have, want to load anything additional onto anything. Um, so BMC Discovery provides that ability to be able to agentlessly sweep the infrastructure where you don't have agents running, where you can't have agents running, where you don't want to have agents running, um, and allow you to discover those switches and those routers and those backend components so that you fill in the critical parts of your uh, configuration management database with those switches and those routers um, and enable you to relate that information to the typical information that we find that customers have, which is quite often more of the, it's the desktops and the servers and those items that they know about because they are running agents and they are being managed actively, whether it be via remote, remote desktop control or some other uh, type of remote access capability. Um, but it is those true infrastructure devices like those backbone routers and switches that provide connectivity throughout the organization that are quite frequently the items that are missing when you start talking about CMDB and asset administration and managing infrastructure. So let me take a look at a couple of um, uh, dashboards within uh, BMC Discovery, it can show you some of the information that it's able to capture right out of the box without having to deploy agents. Um, and one of the nice facets of BMC Discovery is they provide some great information um, with some built-in dashboard views that are uh, available to you right out of the box um, without you having to spend time going through and having to create something that's meaningful um, so that you can have information presented within 
Uh, I've been to customers where we've deployed this and discovered an entire data center within two and a half hours and been done, um, where everything's complete and you have access to be able to pull up all of the individual hosts, which is quite often what a lot of users get when they do discovery is they get um, you know, a list of all of these different devices, whether they're desktops or their laptops or their virtual or their physical or their switches or their routers or what have you. Um, they get this list of devices, but they're lacking any kind of context in terms of how is this VMware uh, VM image connected or related or is it to this SQL server up here? Um, you just have a list of all these disconnected or um, uh, unrelated hosts, but no real understanding of how they're tied together. So the idea behind BMC Discovery is not only allowing you to go out and capture information related to individual hosts, but then being able to also automatically capture relationships between that particular host and other hosts that are also in inventory. And I'll try to expand this so we can take a look at this. So you see in this case, obviously, we've got a, an ESX server um, that is hosting many, many, many different VM guests on upon it. Um, this is the kind of infrastructure that, well, number one, BMC Discovery can go out and automatically generate for you. So not only determine here's how many virtual hosts and how many physical hosts you have, but here's what's running on what. Here's where it's being hosted on this blade and this cabinet on the switch, et cetera. Um, so that again, you don't have to rely on manual means to create the relationships and dependencies between virtual systems and physical hosts, but are able to go out and generate this type of application map um, in an automated fashion, just by simply scheduling, you know, uh, discovery runs against different parts of your network, you know, at different times of the day. You know, I want to discover this part of my network at 8 a.m. on Monday and at uh, 9 o'clock or maybe on Tuesday, I want to discover a different part of the network um, so that you're consistently sweeping the environment looking for changes, whether they be virtual systems that are coming online or whether they be physical systems that are getting added and physically, you know, um, installed into cages, um, then you're able to automatically detect those as well as the relationships that exist between that host and applications like SQL or Oracle that are running on it, and how that relates to other applications or other databases that might be connected to those systems. So BMC Discovery is designed out of the box to allow you to agentlessly sweep your network so that if I want to um, even go as so far as um, helping me to identify unknown um, applications that are in use, um, being able to automatically identify key communications that are taking place in the network or in the environment um, to help you pinpoint potential, you know, shadow IT instances where somebody set up some kind of functionality, uh, the business has become uh, reliant upon it and uses it heavily, whether it was endorsed originally by IT or not. Um, and so BMC Discovery can actually go out and help you identify those areas of the network where you've got a centralized host with lots of communication occurring, but no identified or, um, uh, 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 I guess, uh, a fingerprinted application that goes around this usage. So it can show you you've got a lot of converse, a lot of communication taking place around this host, or you've got a lot of communication taking place around this uh, local workstation. So if you have those kind of shadow IT implementations where people are bringing up SQL databases or uh, you name it, um, to provide some kind of you know business requirement, um, it can help you identify those. So at least you know that they're going what's what's going on, who's utilizing what, and make determinations from things like this kind of graphic here. Um, as to whether this is something that needs to be, you know, added as an enterprise app and supported, or it needs to be uh, shut down and maybe, you know, diverted or um, redirect them to alternate means to achieve the same business function. Um, but that way you're, you, you're able to utilize BMC Discovery to not only identify what you're aware of, but maybe those things that you weren't aware of. 
um, so that you can get a better understanding of what's going on actually on the network versus what you, you thought should be going on or you expected to see. Now, if I go back to my homepage, we'll take a look at a particular use case or a particular scenario. Um, and then this I'll show you uh, a couple of the different dashboards that I think are nice and important. Um, one, I'm going to show you the hardware reference data. This uh, speaks to some of the added functionality that's available with BMC Discovery in, in the terms of <clears throat> extended data so that um, when you're running discovery on your environment, having an understanding of not only how it's configured um, in terms of memory and hard drive and computing, um, you know, processing power, et cetera, but also um, vendor specifications in terms of power consumption, heat output, or BTU, um, and other extended data from the vendor so that those, that information can also be factored into decisions and uh, information that's presented in dashboards as an example. So if you're looking to you know, start retiring those devices that are consuming the most power, for example, then you have all of that, that host information, all that information on those Dell devices or on your IBM servers or whatever the case may be, so that you can come in and you know, pull up a list of those devices that are eating up the most power in the data center or creating the most heat that's then having to be combated with air conditioning, et cetera, so that you're able to use this type of extended data to, to uh, you know, factor into decisions as to uh, you know, if you're going to be consolidating or you're virtualizing and trying to consolidate you know, uh, a bunch of physical systems down into some vir virtual hosts. Uh, which ones do I tackle first? Um, so allow you to use some of that extended information in terms of heat, power, and power consumption, heat output, um, to be able to, to query off of that, pull reports off of that information, and use that to factor into decisions as to how do we consolidate or virtualize the environment in, in terms of which devices or which systems do we attack first. And if we look back at this homepage, go back here, then you also see one of the dashboards that's presented, the virtualization dashboard, which we'll scroll out there, um, actually points back to some of that information. So um, when you're looking at, you know, how virtualized am I in terms of my infrastructure, um, by operating system, by um, uh, Windows OS version, et cetera, um, by technology, um, I've got the ability to go in and look at, you know, how my virtualization breaks down. So where, you know, where am I highly virtualized? Where am I not as highly virtualized? Which technologies are being deployed? Um, a different dashboard view that I can pull up. Um, and then I've also got, in this particular case, a little channel, so it's referred to down here in the lower left-hand corner. It'll also allow me to pull up individual reports. So if I want to pull up a report that shows me all my virtual devices or my virtual hosts, um, being able to pull those up very easily from a dashboard view. Um, so there's a lot of information as it relates to virtualization, power consumption, um, heat output, so that you're able to take a lot of information that you have already related to what applications is the server uh, you know, providing, what data sources does it host, things like that. Um, but then also being able to, to factor in how much power is it consuming, how much heat is it outputting, um, to be able to use those in your analysis of which de you know, devices do we retire first, um, which ones do we hold on to. Now, as you can see, there's also extended data in the sense that with operating systems with um, applications that you have running on your devices, um, you have the ability to pull information related to end of life, end of support um, for those products. So as you're actively doing discovery on your data center and you're determining what versions of SQL or Oracle or particular web server you have Apache that you're running, um, you're able to then compare that information that you're discovering against that end of life, end of support data to help identify potential risk 
where you've got some exposure to a database that's out of support or end of life coming up um, and be able to identify, again, another potential area in terms of virtualizing or starting to collapse the environment and get rid of physical, um, being able to target those things that are end of life and end of support and use this as another area to factor into you know, decisions around the data center itself and how it's managed. Now, if we go back here to the my home dash, I'm going to pull up what's called this baseline dashboard, and you might have seen a, a brief version of it immediately. Um, and it kind of breaks things down. The, the discovery of my environment into nice logical containers. Here's how many hosts you have, and here are how many network devices, how many switches, routers, printers, etc. You have. Um, all of this information that's being discovered with BMC Discovery is done so, again, without having to deploy agents to any machines whatsoever. And it allows you to do a detailed granular discovery of every type of device on your network, covering all kinds of different um, operating systems and vendors, all the platforms, all the way from mainframe discovery all the way to Linux, Mac, Unix, um, of course, Windows, um, AIX, Windows, you know, uh, AIS 400 midframe, um, VMware, ESX, ESXi, um, being able to communicate to all of these different operating systems and platforms independently and being able to have granular control over how they're queried or what kind of information is being pulled. So if I'm dealing with Linux or I'm dealing with AIX environment, then being able to go in and not only see what kind of commands or queries are being issued to get information from that environment, but being able to edit and adjust and update those scripts that are being run so that I can manually or granularly control what kind of information we get from an AIX system um, via SSH versus a Windows system via a WMI query, for example. So you're able to discover a broad range of platforms and uh, application systems across the board, again, without having to worry about having agents that you have to deploy, um, you're able to agentlessly provide credentials to perform this discovery and get everything you need from that Cisco Catalyst switch or that, um, that router by, that you could do just by sitting at the command line prompt now, any of those commands that I can issue at the command line prompt, I can now run agentlessly through BMC Discovery and determine what kind of interfaces are up and running and how they're configured on that switch or that router, um, all in a discovered, you know, uh, scheduled fashion, so that I'm able to build those kind of, you know, application models, those uh, relationship models, for example. So if I go back to my dashboard again, all that key data is in terms of here's how many hosts we've discovered, here's how many applications we've discovered, et cetera. When I go and click on, I want to take a look at my network devices, for example, and it shows me that Cisco switch or that big F, uh, big IP F5 switch, right? Um, I can see individual, you know, attributes. If I select that, you know, host, it'll show me how it relates to other discovered hosts, for example, in the network. Down at the bottom, I can look at, you know, details related to that host in terms of, you know, finger MAC address and uh, OS type, et cetera. Um, everything that we've discovered, right, via that discovery process, um, as well as anything, any other devices that, you know, are related or interfaced to this big FP or big, uh, big IP switch in this case. So I can browse something independent for that device if I want to look at something you know, unique to that particular switch, or if I want to see how it relates to maybe multiple devices on that network, then I can have you know, the system model you know, show me if there are any relationships between those three environments, essentially. And in this case, I can see that they're not. It's modeled all three. Um, I can see each of those devices in turn, but there's no interrelationship between any of the three. Um, I can see there's other relationships between those, uh, the, you know, those uh, databases, those uh, Cisco switches in this case, 
um, to other devices, but not in the case of the three that I've that I've asked for the graphic uh, on. So it'll help you identify and model key aspects of your data center that are typically reliant on subject matter expertise, um, and a lot of people coming together to have to create these graphics and create these these application maps, if you will, how your applications map to the IT infrastructure um, in a very automated fashion without having to worry or rely on subject matter expertise or that 25 year veteran have to bring together you know, all the pieces so that you can create something that you can use that's accurate and you can rely on when it comes to making you know, business decisions. And that's where all of this information that's being captured within side of VMC Discovery, its ultimate landing point would be within the service desk, whether that be Remedy or Remedy Force or Footprints, um, so that all of this information that's being generated here through BMC Discovery is available inside of change management requests and inside of you know problems that are being logged and incidents that are being submitted so that all of this information can be related. But um, at a minimum, you know, this provides you with deep granular understanding of how your environment's connected and how everything's related with a lot less manual entry in terms of things like serial numbers, asset tags, um, let alone when you start getting into the topic of how does you know all of this relate to each other. So again, I can sit here and look at, I've got 281 hosts, but how are those 281 hosts related to each other? Then that's typically the part that you're reliant on the subject matter experts to provide if you don't have the capability to be able to go out and sweep that environment annually and help you determine here are all the components around this Oracle database and how they're related to each other based on running processes and based on identified applications and based on identified databases. You know, being able to build this with almost zero resource um, and be able to manage the CMDB with a lot fewer resources and a lot less manual effort than it would require if you were going to even come close to attempting, you know, to manage this kind of detail, um, you know, via keyboard and or mouse. Almost becomes a requirement in all but the smallest of environments, um, especially when you get into talking about application relationships, application dependencies, and how this map really, you know, uh, unfolds. Um, because that's where the key business decisions come out is, you know, how does this impact my operations? How does this impact payroll? How does this impact my point of sale? Um, it's being able to have an understanding of how everything's connected on the back end and so that when those calls start rolling into the service desk um, related to some outage or issue that relates to a point of sale or some database or some application they can't access, then you have the ability to put it in a context of how that impacts the business. It's not. It's not just an IP address. It's not uh, just a process name that you have to start or stop. It becomes something that you can relate to payroll or point of customer service or point of sale so that you can prioritize incoming issues much faster and much more accurately using information that BMC Discovery is able to provide rather than relying on manual entry, manual upkeep, and manual update of this type of information, which is difficult and error prone and uh, and very 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 time consuming if you're going to if you're going to keep it at, at all accurate and up to date um, and provide you with an automated means to do that so that you can focus on managing that five to ten percent that you, you you're never going to be able to automate and you're never going to get you know hundred percent pure automated CMDB so you always have those things that you you need to look over and curate, but you're able to take the basics in terms of your infrastructure off of your plate and automate that so that you've got everything covered through your tools that do your desktop management like your LAN desk and your SCCMs and your BMC client managements and things like that. Um, you're able to automate you know, the discovery of those devices via those agents, take that information and supplant that or supplement that, I should say, with the BMC discovery data 
which gives you that detailed information related to your infrastructure, your data center, your switches, your routers, your hubs, your backbone connections, and how that all relates back out to the desktops and the laptops. So what you find in, or what I found in a vast majority of environments is for you to get that full, for a customer to get that full picture that shows them everything from that end user that's working on a laptop all the way back to that backend data, SQL database or Oracle database that they're trying to get information out of or access something in, um, that you have to have a combination of the, these two types of tools um, to be able to get you anywhere near the accuracy that's, that's necessary. Otherwise, number one, it's just too time consuming to do it. You can't keep it up. The things change much too rapidly, especially in a virtualized environment. Um, for you to even bother trying to, to keep it up to date because things are changing minute to minute, um, let alone the fact that in most cases, um, you know, they recommend that if, if you can't maintain anywhere close to 98 or 99% accuracy in terms of this kind of information, especially when you're going to rely on it for change approvals and change processes and things like that, that if you can't guarantee 98 or 99% accuracy that you should not even bother to track it in the first place. So a tool like BMC Discovery is critical for most customers in helping you get over that hurdle of being able to shine some light on those dark spots of, of your infrastructure that don't have agents running on them, but how, regardless are typically some of the most critical devices on the network in terms of how many customers or users they serve. Um, but being able to discover that environment and have the relationships and dependencies around the switches and routers automatically populated for you so that um, you can manage that CMDB and keep it accurate with a lot less resources and a lot less time and effort dedicated to you know, maintaining the data and having to go and capture it in some kind of manual fashion. And in most cases, providing you much more granular detail through the automated discovery means than what most customers would ever even attempt to, to manage or upkeep in a manual fashion um, from the start. And as I mentioned, um, you know, providing what I think is a nice different um, set of views against that data out of the box. So whether you have a need to look at the you know, information from a uh, a software, you know, perspective, you know, which applications I'm managing software licensing in, from a data center, which again is some of the most important because it's the most expensive. Um, where's, you know, licensing money going to? Uh, which applications, which operating systems are getting ready to hit end of life and support? Where's our risk? Um, again, being able to, you know, maybe have a view that shows me things from this perspective but I can always drill that into, you know, through these dashboards if I want to get into more detailed information. Um, but being able to, you know, have those granular views um, for different managers, for different executives, depending upon what their focus is, whether they're focused on software or whether they're focused on hardware or infrastructure or operating systems. Um, you know, that way everybody has their own kind of portal or view window onto the BMC discovery data. You're all looking at the same set of information, but presenting it in a meaningful way based on your goals and objectives and your roles and responsibilities so that if I'm focused on virtualization, I can have everything presented in slant of, here's what you should look at to virtualize first based on heat and out and you know power and CPU utilization, et cetera. Um, or I may be focused on hardware or operating systems or desktop apps and just want to have a dedicated focus around managing that licensing and managing upgrades and updates to those applications. So um, provides everybody with their nice, you know, uh, window onto that same set of data. So regardless of their roles, responsibilities, the information that's being captured by BMC Discovery is applicable, whether you're going through and trying to build that disaster recovery plan um, that you know shows you exactly how to restore your uh, data center in the case of you know some calamity, 
Um, or something that comes in and identifies, you know, here's where your potentials are for collapsing storage, for example, or getting rid of, you know, local drive storage for NAS. Um, you know, regardless of, of the need, you know, you're able to go out and use those scripts and use all the platform support that BMC Discovery provides to go out and query the the EMC um, uh, storage box, the EMC storage, storage SAN, um, or to query that SQL database or that Oracle database to be able to get the information you need without having to deploy agents, um, but still being able to go to a granular depth um, that provides you all of the information you would need to be able to make good decisions around disaster recovery and storage and OS upgrades and application upgrades, et cetera, all in a very automated manner and having the ability to then synchronize all of this, of course, with your service desk so that you have a means of sharing this information with those changes, with those problems and those incidents that are being recorded um, through very simple means. Um, but you don't have to worry about deploying agents to servers in your data center or those devices that can't run agents like your switches and routers and hubs, but you don't lose the ability to discover them and query those devices in detail and in depth just because they can't run an agent. That's where BMC Discovery is designed to fill in that, uh, that, that big gap that typically exists um, when you talk about asset inventory and um, you know, managing a CMDB, which tends to start with the desktops, you know, front of house devices, and slowly starts to work its way back into the data center, but somewhere along the way, in many cases, gets stopped or never makes it. Um, this is something to help you get over that hurdle and hump very quickly and enable you to keep it accurate, up to date, as well as giving the added benefit of the relationships and the dependencies that get defined automatically so that you have all of that additional information and detail to be able to utilize without the added, you know, uh, the added uh, weight of having to spend time, you know, not only managing host information, but, okay, this host is gone. Now, what is it connected to? Where does it go? What do we need to delete? What needs to be modified? But having a nice automated means of doing that. So for most customers, BMC Discovery is, um, you know, that, that, almost requisite step if you want to get to a, a, a situation where you've got uh, the ability to manage impact and do a good impact analysis on the environment, having the discovery information from something like BMC Discovery, the relationships and dependencies between apps and the underlying infrastructure becomes critical. Um, and if you're not managing it manually um, and you don't have a tool like this, then it's probably not being done. And there's, there's some big risk and exposure there. And that's where BMC Discovery is designed to kind of fit in, is to um, provide an easy means that's very palatable because it's very quick to get up and running, very easy to install. Um, there's no agents, it's virtual appliance, it's basically a file copy. So you literally have this installed and up and running and have your data center discovered in, in under a day um, and have some valuable business information that you maybe never knew before um, and maybe reaffirm some things that you thought you knew, um, and now you have some, you know, empirical evidence on. Um, it's a great tool for the data center um, where you don't have agents that you can deploy and you don't have any kind of, you know, standard means of doing discovery, um, especially in terms of building relationships and dependencies. This is a great way to automate that and free up resources to, to manage other aspects of your IT operations besides, you know, keying in serial numbers, asset tags, and relationships. Now, I know we've got about, looks like about five minutes before our scheduled stop time, so I'd like to leave a little bit of time for anyone that has any questions in general or wants to um, ask about anything in any more detail, please use the chat window or, or the phone to uh, ask any questions you might have. We'll try and answer them as we come up. We actually do have some questions already. Uh, the first question comes from our friends at AT&T. Uh, Jason wants to know, does BMC Discovery Tool discover interface card and associated IP address? If so, can you drill down into interface IP address level on the visualization diagram to show how it works or how it looks? Um, yes, so for a given host, 
I, I believe if I'm, if I'm understanding the question right, for a given host, now I don't, I don't know for any of the given data we have here if I have multiple hosts by, by, uh, by NIC or by adapter. But yeah, if I pull into a specific device, for example, or pull up a specific device, then if I, when I'm looking at the detail down here below, it'll show me you know, all the specific information related to that device. So you got, you know, network interfaces, network adapters, et cetera. Um, and I could, you know, click on the details button here if I want to show the, you know, the details for those interfaces. So I certainly have access to be able to, you know, pull up and view that detail, you know, right here from the console. Um, that's information that's queried and I can, you know, adjust those scripts depending on if there's maybe additional information I want to pull from that, um, that local area network connection. Um, that may be as much as I want. I might not even want that much, and I might go and pull that out of the script entirely if I don't even care about that. Um, but as the admin and administrator of BMC Discovery, you have complete control over how much, you know, if this is not enough detail and you want more, you can always adjust the scripts to go get more detail. If this is more than you want and this is too busy of a screen, then you can always go in and, and basically cull things out of those scripts to clean this up to where you're getting just the bare, you know, requirements or necessities that you want. Okay, another question from uh, Mutual of Omaha. Eileen wants to know, uh, wasn't that EOL info available, only available via the extended data pack through purchase, or is it built into or comes with Discovery now? Um, BMC Discovery has an extended data pack. You are correct. That is that, yeah, that end of life data, end of support data. You're absolutely correct. That's what, that information comes through what's referred to as the extended data pack. Uh, at the, the last time I checked, that extended data pack was still an additional license cost with BMC Discovery. Like you don't have to have that, but for customers that are looking for that, that license is there. But you are correct. It is not part of the, the base BMC Discovery product. It is part of the BMC Discovery extended data pack. Yes. Okay. Uh, Home Depot's uh, representative, Pat, uh, will any network security need to be disabled for the discovery process? Um, no, in that, in, and by that I mean that you can configure the discovery around your local network requirements. Um, you're not locked into, you know, being able to go in, you know, having to go in and discover devices in a particular way or a particular fashion and by that i mean like things like ports for example as you can see i can come in here if i if i want and readjust the ports that are being used for discovery from the defaults to conform to local network requirements so i guess i, I could say yes you'll have to change it if you want to use the bmc discovery defaults if you've deviated from those at all and these are typical i mean like SSH port 22, that's a standard, these are all standard ports. Uh, it's just if you've changed from those standards at all or if you've repurposed those, um, then you, you know, you, you could either go in and reconfigure your network to use these port standards or go into BMC Discovery and reconfigure the ports here to conform to the way your network's actually configured. It's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, but it provides you the flexibility to go either way. Okay. And the state of Florida wants to know what is the impact of my applications running on platforms that are not supported by BMC Discovery? Huh. Well, number one, if I would say, as a general rule, when you're going through and you're configuring Discovery to go out and run within your environment, right, in your network, um, if there are devices within that IP address network, your IP ad, uh, address range that I don't want scanned. In other words, they, they either we're not going to be able to identify them or there's something about them, we just, you don't care about them, then I won't add them to that range. I'll, I'll exclude them. So essentially, you know, in, the, in the example, um, if there were devices that fit that criteria, I just, I wouldn't scan them. I just leave them out of that discovery scan so that whether it was a single IP address or whether it was a range of them, you know, dot, from dot .10 to dot .20 or whatever the case may be, um, I would just exclude them so that 
if it's something that I don't care to have in inventory or something that I'm not, I don't care to manage or have responsibility for, then I can point this at a particular subnet and say scan all of these addresses within the subnet except for dot one and dot two, for example. Um, that way, the only things that I'm getting back in my reports that I'm viewing in the console and my dashboards are those IP address ranges and, and IP addresses that I explicitly have gone looking for and those that I haven't excluded. Okay, and we have time for one more question, and that's the City of Ottawa. What is the performance impact of running BMC Discovery? Um, I would say the first time, uh, and it's, uh, I will say it's, if you're running, if you're talking about just pure defaults, right, the default scripts for the Cisco switches, and, um, and again, there are some differences depending upon if you provide credentials or not. Um, you can do uh, what's referred to as a, just a, a sweep of the network where you're not providing any credentials. It's just going through and hitting IP addresses and just looking to see if there's a heartbeat there, basically, um, and what it is. You know, typically tell you I'm a Dell printer or I'm a, you know, IBM workstation, or things like that. I have a Cisco switch, but that's pretty much all you get. Um, you know, that type of sweep, can, um, you know, you could sweep through. 3,000, 4,000, you know, servers inside of an hour and be done. You know, if you're, you're asking for very little information. Now, if I take those same 3,000 servers and I provide an ID and a password, and I say I want to query these devices using WMI or I want to run SSH scripts if they're Linux boxes, for example, then, you know, the time obviously for that scan is going to go up because now we're logging in, authenticating, and actually running scripts and getting return results and values back from command line prompts or remote control logins, things like that. Um, I would say on average for your typical server, um, you're going to see maybe that first scan, I would say maybe no more than two minutes. Would it see some kind of activity? You know, we're just going to be looking at the hard drive and scanning the application snapshots and things like that. Um, obviously, the first scan is the biggest. That's where all the data is captured and then from then on it's all delta so um, if nothing's changing then you know that, that first discovery is always the big one um, and then from that point on everything always tends to become you know along the two or three percent of what that original scan was because you only have on it especially if you're running things on like a day-to-day -day basis um, you don't have you shouldn't have like you know 10 percent of your environment changing from Monday to Tuesday and Tuesday to Wednesday um, that way, you know, that initial scan that you run, you can schedule that in off hours, early in the morning, or, you know, late in the evening to minimize impact of business. Um, and then once you've got that initial scan, then unless you've got a, you know, a large, you know, portion of, of changes being made daily, where these things are constantly in flux, then everything that happens from that point forward, um, if anything, will be minimal because it's only going to be sending up what's changed from yesterday to today. Um, and so all those subsequent runs, instead of taking two minutes, they may take 10 seconds at most. And it looks like we have one more small question from Mutual of Omaha. I, I'd like to get this one in. Uh, Eileen wants to know, what is the best way to permanently remove chatty apps like ILMT and patrol from maps via script is the question. Via map, well, so remove, well, do you mind that with things like BMC Discovery, you're not, because there's no agent, we have no, there's no capacity for us to take any action through BMC Discovery. Now, in other words, you can discover all kinds of things. You run scripts to query information and make changes. We just can't write those back to that Cisco switch or that router, for example. So we can tell you how it's configured, but when it comes time to actually taking some, you know, management of that device, um, taking control, um, making some change, or correcting something that we've discovered, that's where you're then looking at, you know, either management tools that are designed around, you know, I know Cisco has Cisco Works, for example, it's just theirs, but there's also, BMC has tools like there's an automation, a network automation tool that allows you to make updates to banner messages and make updates to active Ethernet ports and port configuration changes and things like that. Um, and it's typically used in conjunction with BMC Discovery where BMC Discovery is going out 
and on a daily basis saying, here's how this device is configured, here's how it looks, here's how it is configured, then if that then deviates from some baseline or some corporate gold standard or policy, then, okay, here's how this is device is configured, here's how it should be configured, here's the deviation, and then with using a tool like the network automation tool, being able to roll back some modifications or changes to get it back in alignment or to install something new that needs to be installed to get it into alignment. It's basically, you know, automatically detect that it's out of compliance and automatically rectify or correct that compliance issue um, so that you're not reliant on manual um, resolution, but you're in kind of a state of continuous compliance. You might get notified that something's out of compliance, but hopefully it's only out of compliance for five or 10 minutes until you're able to automatically resolve it, and then you get a notice that now it's back in compliance. Um, but you're not having to worry about people manually responding to deploy software or to make changes. Um, you use something like BMC Discovery to continuously detect and you know take inventory on the network, and then if it detects or finds something through that inventory process that then triggers some response or action, that's when you have those agents and you have those automation tools that can then take action from here. All right, folks, if you have any for, uh, further questions, please go ahead and, and pick up the phone and call us at 844-FLYCAST, that's 844-359-2278, or simply email us at info at flycastpartners.com, that's info at flycastpartners.com. If you email us, we'll get back to you within five business days with an answer for you. I want to thank all of you for joining us today for our presentation on discovery and taking time out of your busy day, as well as Kyle, thank you for taking time out as well, sir. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to wish everybody a great week and until next time.